Keith and Mary Hudson aren't just the parents of a pop star. In a few circles, they're stars themselves. The couple started a religious charity in 2015 named Keith Hudson Ministries. They use the mask of spiritual services to get donations from their wealthy patrons. They held events at exotic locations in their charity's name to give people a supposed connection with God. Once these patrons felt satisfied with their religion, they were ripe pickings for the Hudsons. These events were the primary source of their income and were entirely funded by their victims. Both of them claimed to have spiritual powers capable of healing their followers. Mary spoke in tongues during her prophetic night ceremonies. By tongues, we mean absolute gibberish akin to drunk sims screaming at each other. She also claimed to heal members of the crowd. Keith told people that he had the ability of prophecy, spiritual healing, miracle working. They used these tactics to con many gullible people out of a bunch of money. It seems like all of those religious swindlers use the Pentecostal religion as their way to, into the community. Look at people like Joel Austin and Kenneth Copeland. These con men use the same strategy as the Hudsons to prey on the same type of people. For whatever reason, that group seems to be particularly susceptible to the lies of self-proclaimed prophets and holy men. The company's spending habits came under investigation in 2019 when a tax document was filed that didn't seem quite right. This document showed that Keith Hudson Ministries spent 95% of their earnings that year. If you look at the previous year, a pattern emerges. In 2019, they earned $185,000 but spent $179,000. But the year before, that was even worse. The charity collected $189,000 and spent $186,000 of it on personal expenses. When you consider them spending all of that money, the con couple wasn't very smart. They blew through the foundations of their scheme and before long, it fell, demolished by their own greed. They actually held many different services where their patrons could go and find a new way to donate. These services included Arise conferences held at luxurious locations. They hosted spiritual gatherings in Hawaii, Panama, and Switzerland. Usually, a religious figure requires a bit of pious and humble nature, but this didn't affect Keith Hudson. He dressed like a rock star from the 90s. He sported leather jackets, wraparound glasses, and jewelry for everyone to see. Even when dressed like this, he could still trick people into believing he had miracle working powers. Apparently, looking the part doesn't matter anymore. The Hudsons focused heavily on their religion throughout most of their life. Even their pop star daughter, Katy Perry, couldn't escape the thump of their Bibles. In interviews with publications like Vanity Fair, she has stated that her upbringing was devoid of anything resembling a normal childhood. Her parents enforced strict rules on anything they deemed as problematic. The young idol couldn't say things like deviled eggs or dirt devil without punishment. Even a breakfast staple like Lucky Charms wasn't safe from Mary's scrutiny. Apparently, the word lucky reminded her of Lucifer. It's safe to say she isn't a fan of the popular Netflix series about the devil being an L.A. nightclub owner turned detective. The budding star relied on her friends to sneak her CDs to listen to music outside of her religion, which makes her musical talent that much more impressive. Her parents sent her away to Jesus camp when Katie's personality became evident. Once there, she was encouraged to follow the same strict religious guidelines as her parents. She was also pushed to pray the gay away while at camp. Considering she later wrote a song called I Kissed a Girl that clearly didn't work. The Hudsons pushed their daughter farther away from the religion than ever before. Incredibly, Katy Perry is as open-minded as she is after a very religious upbringing. She took the Bible thumping and turned it into a beat to sing over. The Hudsons' obsession with their religion would make you think they were both born on top of a mountain in front of a burning bush. This couldn't be further from the truth. They might have led crazier lives than their famous daughter. During the 1960s, the pair were living very different lives. In an interview with Katie Couric, Perry stated that her mother dated Jimi Hendrix briefly. If you know anything about his lifestyle, then you know that God was nowhere around him. Around the same time, her father was friends with Timothy Leary and a part of Strawberry Fields Forever. The Beatles reference might have been a dig at her dad's past, or perhaps an enthusiast group obsessed with psychoactive drugs. Leary was a controversial figure who advocated the use of psychedelics. While there is no confirmation, it seems evident that Keith did as well. These were fascinating relationships for the two future holy warriors to have. Keith speaks about the moment that changed his life. He has stated that he talked to God in an apple orchard and from that moment on was a devout Christian. Too bad it wasn't a strawberry field. 
The couple ended up clashing with their daughter later on in life as the promiscuous nature of her music became apparent. When Perry wrote, I kissed a girl, her parents were none too pleased. They both put out statements condemning their daughter for promoting sin. Her mother said she hated the song and believed it to be shameful and disgusting. She also stated that Katie knew just how disappointed her family was in her. Keith has been known to rant about her in his sermons. He said that people question his ability to preach when his daughter promotes alternative lifestyles. A running theme with these two seems to be judging others when they aren't living up to their own religion. It makes it that much funnier when you realize both of them were hypocrites who fleece people for their hard-earned money. It seems like the Hudsons worship the almighty dollar more than God. The events held by Keith Hudson Ministries were what really drew the people and their wallets into the fold. The donations came in the form of sponsorships for women, and there were a few different tiers to them. The first two tiers, set at $1,000 and $2,500 respectively, seem pretty straightforward. You get to pick your seating at the event and have VIP access. The second tier gets you a place as a vendor with a table and all. The next two tiers jack the price way up without offering much more. These tiers suffer diminishing returns and cost $5,000 and $7,500 respectively. The Vision tier added two tickets to the Arise conferences and breakfast with Mary Hudson. The Outpour tier adds a hotel room for an additional $2,500. To be clear, it would be cheaper to book a hotel room for the weekend. The final tier was the Glory tier, which cost $10,000. It comes with a special gift from Mary Hudson herself. It better be an autographed copy of Teenage Dream at that price point. Since 2015, when the charity was founded, the Hudsons pulled in well over half a million dollars. To be more specific, it raised around $600,000 of collected donations for women and the church. However, the couple misappropriated most of that money. They spent 95% of the money on their lavish lifestyle, from fancy hotel rooms and exotic locations to Keith's increasingly costly wardrobe. They tried to hide what they were doing behind false piety. The two took yearly salaries of around $5,000, making it seem honorable. Of course, when donations pay for most of your living expenses, you don't need a paycheck. Their intense spending habits were what brought them to the IRS's attention in the first place. Most con artists are opportunistic and the Hudsons are no exception. With fear running rampant due to the pandemic, they saw the perfect chance to prey on people's faith and insecurities. The couple put out religious face masks with sayings like faith and believe. These masks cost their patrons $20 a piece and sold under the idea that all buyers were helping spread the gospel, when in reality, they were just funding the Hudsons' next trip. This was proven with their very next project, the Urgency Tour. The tour was supposed to be about spreading the work of God's kingdom and helping women worldwide. However, after everything we know about these two, it's more likely they'll be enjoying another extravagant vacation. I kissed God and I liked it. Does that sound sort of familiar? Well, that's because it's a religious parody of Perry's I Kissed a Girl and I Liked It line. Her father spoke this line with enthusiasm at a sermon in England. He went on about how he believed that God had a plan even though she was promoting sin. Keith alluded to the idea that her infamy would bring more people to their church and allow the spread of the gospel. Her mother was reportedly working on a book about how her daughter's fame has affected their ministry. Even though the Hudsons condemn every step their pop idol daughter takes, they have no problem taking advantage of it. Her parents have been seen at red carpet events and movie premieres with Katie's at the time husband, Russell Brand. It seems like Keith and Mary were so focused on their daughter that they never looked into Brand's work. The Hudsons have also been seen at the very concerts that they say are works of sin. You'd think all these places with all these entertainers and celebrities would be off-putting to them. Instead of distancing themselves from this part of Katie's life, they seem to revel in it. The two have been known to brag about their celebrity connections. Connections they can only attribute to their daughter's fame. Click here to watch one of these next videos. And let us know in the comment section if you think the charity is real or not.